Hello, this is John Pinkston, and in this video, we are finishing out our series on Habakkuk. Throughout this series, we have talked a lot about Habakkuk, but we haven't actually talked to him. So in this video, we're going to take some time and we're going to have an interview with Habakkuk and kind of get his impression on what was going on in his life and in the life of Judah at the time that he was writing. And so please sit back and enjoy this interview with Habakkuk. Good morning, Habakkuk. It's good to have you with us this morning. Thanks for having me, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, we've been talking here over the last several weeks all about you. About me. For several weeks. And yeah, uh, can you believe that? Not really. The only reason I have a long name is because that's the only thing people can remember about me. I'm the prophet no one talks about, but then they know my name because it's so strange. I don't know about that, but why don't you tell us a little bit about what was going on when you were active as a prophet? I was watching my country fall, and it was hurting me. I loved my country, and I loved its people. But we were surrounded by enemies on all sides of us, and even by enemies from within, and I was losing hope. And that was when you cried out to God? It was. I was frustrated, tired, and scared, so I was ready for something new. Well, we didn't have cameras back then for your conversation with God, but we do have a dramatic reenactment put in place for you now. Oh God, how long am I going to have to sit here and cry out to you? When will you listen? I am surrounded by violence and destruction. All good people are surrounded by wickedness, so any justice becomes perverted. Whoa, uh, hold on there. Just look around a little bit, and see what I'm doing. Look I'm doing something. I'm sending the Chaldeans out to take care of things. I know they aren't what you expected. They're bitter and violent, and and all around pain in your neck. But that is what you're getting for now. We haven't played the whole reenactment yet, but that gets us through the first part of your conversation with God. What were you thinking when God responded to you like that? I went through the roof. They were even worse than what we were already dealing with. I couldn't believe that God would do this to us. So I let God know just what I thought of that. Let's pick our reenactment up at that point. This is where you are in the process of telling God just what you think of what's going on and uh, his response to you. Here's the clip. Fine God, if this is what you're going to do, then let me tell you what I'm going to do. Okay, go ahead. I'm standing right here, and I'm not going to move, and I'm going to wait for however long it takes to see how you will respond to what I've said. Good. I'm glad you're going to do that. What? You want me to do this? Yes, I do. Now you'll hear the rest of what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a vision of what the future might look like. When you get it, write it down in plain easy to read language, so that it can be shared with others. Then wait for it. It'll come at the right time, even if you think it's late, it won't be. So what is this vision? It is a simple vision. Those who have done wrong and who have caused problems will get what they deserve, and my will will reign over all. Wow, that's some pretty heavy stuff. It was. Your reenactment didn't show everything, but it did a pretty good job of getting the point across. I remember feeling contradicted when God gave me this vision. Contradicted? What do you mean by uh, contradicted? God was telling me that he would win, which is a good thing, but the vision of what life would be like until then wasn't pretty. Well, you obviously look pretty well adjusted now, so what was it that changed? I thought through what God was saying. As God's people we'd had a great past, but our present wasn't looking too good. But, because of what God was saying to me, I could see a new future. It wasn't until I actually stopped to listen to God that I saw the future he was talking about. There's still more pain and heartache to come, 
but we have hope for a new and better future. On that note, Habakkuk, I want to thank you for being here with us today and for taking part in this interview. You're quite welcome. I'm glad I could be here. From this point, we're going to join uh, Habakkuk as he is relating his final prayer to God. This comes out in chapter 3 of the book of Habakkuk. Lord, I have heard your reputation. I have seen your work. Over time, revive it. Over time, make it known. Though angry, remember compassion. I hear and my insides tremble. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters my bones. I tremble while I stand, while I wait for the day of distress to come against the people who attack us. Though the fig tree doesn't bloom, and there's no produce on the vine, Though the olive crop withers, and the fields don't provide food. Though the sheep is cut off from the pen, and there is no cattle in the stalls. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my deliverance. The Lord God is my strength. He will set my feet like the deer. He will let me walk upon the heights. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our series on Habakkuk and this a special interview that we had with the prophet himself today. If you're interested in finding out more, check out our website at www.wellmoumc.org and then look for the studies link. Thank you and God bless.